Hi there! In this video, I'm going to talk about my new challenge, One Button a Week 2022. And to kickstart everything, I'm going to show you how to work with metal threads um, for our first week prompt, which is Sparkle. So let's get started. everyone happy new year so if you've been following any of my other social media accounts you'll know that I have decided to set up a little challenge for you all this year this is called one button a week 2022 and basically it's to encourage you to try to make buttons there are a few little bit rules for the challenge um, namely that it can be made out of anything. So you don't have to just make thread or passementary buttons. You know, if you like working with polymer clay, make a polymer clay button. If you like working with leather, or if you've got a clever idea for wood or paper, go ahead. But it does have to be a button, be able to be used as a fastener. So big giant wall hangings that use, for instance, a dorset button technique or something like that, or cookies or things like of that nature, they won't count. Um, we want to make sure that, that they are still effectively buttons. Now that doesn't just mean they have to be sort of circles. They can be any shape, but that they could be used in theory as an actual fastener. And the last is that I will be publishing prompts. So one prompt for a week, just to give you some ideas. Now, if you um, are interested, you can go over to um, my new blog that I've set up, which is onebuttonaweek.co.uk. And you can sort of see all of the prompts there, all of the rules, double check with anything. And the idea is, is that you create a button, you pop it on your social media accounts um, with the hashtag one button a week 2022. So there we go. Now there are other hashtags. And of course, if for instance, you make a Dorset button, you could add the hashtag Dorset buttons 2022, because this is the anniversary of, well, Legend has it that 1622 was when the Dorset bus button industry started. So, you know, there's celebrations and we're encouraging people to take part in that and create, learn how to create Dorset buttons. Uh, of course, if you've made a leather button, you're not going to tag it up as a Dorset button, but you could, there's a lot of other hashtags that you can use so that, and that's basically so that the rest of us taking part can also find your image and know that you're taking part. So if you don't have a social media account, say for instance, you don't like, you know, you don't have a Twitter, um, an Instagram account. I don't really do Twitter because it's so political, but you know, obviously if you like popping your images up on there, go right ahead. Um, it's mainly Instagram. I have a Facebook group, Gina B. Silkworks Facebook group. So you can search that and come and join us. And so there it's, um, because it's a members group, you can just post pictures up there with the knowledge that the other people are, are more or less taking part. There is also an email address if you just don't do social media, but you'd like me to see your picture, me personally. Um, and that again is published over on the blog. So I'll add a link below so that you can get over to the blog and check out sort of what the prompts are. I'm publishing the prompts in advance, um, basically. So you've got a bit of time to think, um, you know, I know that, yeah, you've got a week, but you know, you might forget where, or you might want to have a holiday or something like that. So you can drop in and out whenever you want. I've also, um, if you're somebody who wants to take part in the whole year, 
You've also got some wild cards. So you've got four wild cards where basically you can say, well, absolutely nothing here floats my boat. I'm just going to make this button. And so you can use a wild card there. Um, and it's just basically fun. Doesn't cost you any, you know, you don't have to sign up. Doesn't cost you anything. Use the materials that you've got. But if you can follow the prompts, that'd be great because it's nice to see how people interpret. Now, I will be popping videos up relative to it, but I won't be giving instructions on every single week um, about the button that I make. Not least because, you know, I might decide that uh, a button for a new book or a kit is going to be my button for this week. A year is a long time. I'm not going to plan in advance, but I'm going to try to pop videos up that um, help you out or even just show you, um, you know, a collage of what other people are doing, even if it's just little shorts. So hopefully we can sort of keep the ball rolling across Instagram, um, Facebook, and of course here, wherever possible. So if you want to join in, just remember the hashtag, hashtag one button a week, 2022. Our first week prompt, and what I didn't say before is all, all weeks run sort of Monday until the Sunday night sort of thing. But you can, you know, pop them up early if you've already come up with it. Um, the first week's prompt is sparkle. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to work with gold threads and um, some plate. So in this instance, it's brass um, strips that you can get uh, for embroidery. So it isn't the real gold stuff, but the same thing works. So it's a bit tricky using these um, materials sometimes with plain wrapped buttons. And so this will also work out for those of you who, you know, want to do some really fancy blingy 18th century buttons. These um, tricks will work. So what you're going to need, you're going to need a button mold. I do find that if you're working with any of the flat plate, it does actually look that bit better if you go with a button mold that has a slight uh, dome. So this is our 35 millimeter hand turned molds. Um, it's number 119 in our uh, shop. They're really nice um, button mold. Um, I've chosen the larger size just basically so that you can see what I'm doing a little bit more easily. You'll need your choice of gold threads or foils. Um, we do have some fine. This, these are real metal um, strips, which are plate, classed as a broad plate. So you can get sort of the real, the gold plated strips um, or silver plated strips as well, I think, um, from different embroidery places. As I say, we do sell some different ones um, that we get in. These ones are quite thin in the width, so we're looking at about two millimeters wide. Gold threads, if you want to use it, metal threads. Um, this one is an Overosoy metallic bordon. Um, so it's kind, you can use sort of Jap threads, anything really. This one has got a metallic and um, I think it's a plasticized that is around a core. So let's see if I can get that in focus for you. So made very similar to um, the different types of metallic threads um, were made in the past. So with a strip around a core. And but this will work if you're using synthetic metal threads. Um, the same principles will work as well. You should also have a base thread. In this case, I'm using um, a simple pearl A cotton uh, number eight. You can use anything that you like. 
you'll need needles, you'll need scissors, you'll need scissors specifically for your metal thread and one for your regular thread. Don't mix the two of them up if you can help it because the metal threads will dull your thread scissors and then it won't cut your thread, particularly silk. It, it'll just be awful against your silk. And last but not least, a strong either sewing thread, sewing linen, just something unobtrusive that you can use at the back of the button. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my button mold. Now I need six divisions, but obviously the, I'm using a large button mold, so I'm going to use the 12 division circle gauge. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up and bring it closer to my face so that I can get it lined up. And then I'm just going to mark off every other notch, which will give me six. And of course, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but it's quite helpful if you can do that and divide up. Okay. Now, if you like using beeswax, definitely pop some on the back. You could pop some across the front as well, but it depends on what threads you're using, really, whether that's going to make any difference. So I'm going to hold this at the back. You'll notice I cleared the table off. Um, I had started and then got interrupted and had to start again. So I'm going from bottom to top at those divisions that have been marked, okay? I'm gonna wrap seven wraps. So one, two, three, four. And then back to the other side of that center, one, five, six, seven. I quite like using um, odd numbers because I can have one down the center. I'm going to rotate ever so slightly so that the next two are lined up. Again, keeping my tension. One. Two. Three four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And then rotate again. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. I'm going to cut a length. Now at this stage I've got to thread my needle so that I can fasten this. You can either hold it. Um, if you're a little bit more practiced you'll probably hold but you can use a clip or um, that is our Button maker's third hand and tool tin. So this third hand comes in really handy for things like this, because if you just drop it, you will unravel, unwrap what you've done. So the first thing that you have to do is pull these straight pieces where you have changed direction in so that they're held. So it's just the same. As with a death's head. Okay, so that's really the most important thing to do. It's all right, my needles just come undone again. And I'm just going to weave that through a couple of times to make sure that that stays. Okay. 
Now the next thread I'm going to use is the uh, Bordon metallic thread. You can use plate right to the edge, um, but it is more difficult to do. No word of a lie. It's difficult. You may still want to do, a, if you were doing that, a couple of ordinary wraps using your foundation thread just to make life a little bit easier for you. So I'm just going to thread the end. onto a needle just that I can secure it at the back. Now a lot of this also um, how how you have to secure will have to do with um, the shape of the button mold, the angles of the button mold as well. So if you're having difficulty with one type of button mold try one that's shallower or flatter, um, it might help instead. So we're going to proceed to wrap a six point wrap. So it works in exactly the same way as the death set in that you wrap from bottom to top. But here we're going to anchor on two spokes. So we did three wraps, a spoke comes out from the center. So we have six spokes. So we're going to Anchor on two spokes, skipping one. Rotate anti-clockwise, and notice I'm holding at the edge of the button, and wrap from bottom to top. Rotate, anchor, bottom to top. And we'll keep going until we've come all of the way around which should give us what looks like a little star. Okay, this isn't what the final, this isn't a star wrap, so, but it will all become clear as we work, but that's how we start. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to wrap some more and I'm working in towards the center. Now this should help to give me a better foundation for using the plate. Metal thread is difficult to use. There's no, no denying it. Um, whether it's got a high metal content, whether it's got a high lurex content, it's difficult to use. It can behave in a way that you don't expect. Button making does mean that you can use a lot more of the more modern threads, certainly, than you might be able to for embroidery, uh, which is good if you choose wrapped buttons um, because you're just laying it more or less next to each other, which is quite nice. But as you can see, you've, what you've got to do is you've got to sort of keep the wraps straight but probably not too close together too piled on top of each other it's always best to have a little bit of a gap um, with metal threads in particular it's always best to kind of have a little bit of a gap with all of them but if you manage to keep more of a, a straight sorry I've come out of focus a little bit because of it's it's getting so sparkly um, to keep them as straight as you can and don't worry about shoving them too close together so if I there we go readjust that for you you can see that there's some spacing it's not really going to be very noticeable if you can hear my dog barking I apologize <laughs> He's in one of those moods today. I think it's the holiday. So let's see how many I've got here. So two, three, four, five. That's five. 
Make sure that you do count your sides so that you can get the same number of wraps when you're changing wraps over. Unless, of course, you want something that's uneven, which can sometimes work to great advantage in actual fact. Make some really unusual buttons. Okay, so that's five wraps on each side. Shiny. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece of that and I'm going to go ahead and thread up my needle. And secure those wraps. I'm just basically weaving under to make sure this thread is secured. Again, make sure you use your metal thread scissors for your metal thread. So there's our, our start. Okay, if you need to tweak any of them to keep them, get them straight again, go ahead and do that. Obviously, the most common um, thing with all button making, but particularly when you start to get into the, the more domed shapes, is your threads will have more of a tendency to slip down the side, and that's not what you want. So you're better to just try to keep them lined up with a little bit of space, but so that they're still straight. It'll just help for a, a neater button. If you find that you're having a lot of difficulty with the threads moving, it's probably because you're holding your button mold like this. And you're trying to turn. Every time you turn, when you're holding your button like that, you are dislodging your threads. So try to get into a habit, if you can, of holding along the, the edges. Now, if you um, are just going to wrap with metal thread, you may find, sorry, creaky chair, you may find that using your uh, button tool or a stick where you can just pop that up in the center and that will hold and you carry on wrapping just as you would normally. But because we're going to use plate next, we can't really do that. So next thing to do is to thread a needle with some uh, stronger thread. It doesn't matter what needle, doesn't matter what thread, just so long as it's strong. And I tend to thread singly. I will put a knot in one end just so that I can help secure it to the uh, button. So I'm just going to Secure that thread onto the button and take my time so it doesn't pop straight back out. I'm securing this at the back of the button. I just felt myself dislodge that, so pop that back where it should be, where it belongs. Always check. You can often feel, or you'll often see that you've you've pulled on something at the front. So now I'm going to add the plate. I'm going to turn around to the back of the button. And I'm going to lay a length of the plate alongside, well, just at the back. I'm going to stitch around and hopefully not miss it. It does help to actually hold on to the end so that you don't miss it. I'll focus this in in a minute. Now what I've done is I've actually cut a length. Um, I find it easier than trying to 
attempt to tame this stuff um, when it's on a spool. I'm sure that the correct way would be to have it on a proper spindle, the way embroiderers do. Um, but yeah, I just find it easier to cut pieces and if they're not long enough, I can always add some more. So I've stitched here, which you may not be able to see very well. Now I'm gonna fold the end over to create a little bit of a hook. And I'm gonna stitch again so that that hook is stitched down. Now in theory, this will help to hold this plate in place. You have to treat it carefully, especially the stuff made out of brass. This is just metal strip, so if you bend it too much, it will break. So one quick bend back. You know, it will break at the um, point at, at where you've bent it. Okay, so ready to go. I'm going to leave this in place because this will help me. I can secure my plate at the back when I need to. So now I'm going to start wrapping. Now, to be really good, I should find where the last wrap was, which is this one, because that's the wrap that goes straight across and hasn't got anything covering it. Okay, so if you're doing colors, and you want everything to stay nice and even with the, um, the wraps that are going over the previous wraps. This is how you want to start. You want the last wrap across the top and then slightly turn so that you're going to wrap over that. Now with the plate, you need to work hard to keep it straight and flat. Okay, so like this, it's got a lot of kinks in it, so I have to really think about what I'm doing because I don't want those kinks to end up being a weakness. So I have to sort of flip it round so that it unwraps as I work. But other than that, it's the same principle. We go from bottom to top, rotate slightly, holding it at attention. Fold it over, keeping the plate straight. And continue so that you fill your button, or at least as many times as you for wraps that you want. Now, if you feel that things are getting a little bit kinked, or you need, um, you, you feel like you're losing control of it, go ahead turn it round, pop some holding stitches in so that you can actually take it and handle it without holding. You do see linen holding stitches on metal thread buttons of the past. So it's not something that you have to like be all concerned about. It's perfectly okay if you're trying to do something authentic. So I'm just going to, I've got a bit of a kink there and I want to get this under control. So I'm going to gently un, unkink it, untwist it. You don't want to have that um, you don't just want to run your fingers down it. It's okay to a point, but you see if you do that, then you'll get another kink. Because they're they're rolled round, this is just the way that it is. You just have to sort of treat it with a little bit of care. And of course, you don't want to smooth it out too much because this is a textured one, so we don't want to lose the texture. And again, wrap. Keeping it flat and untwisted. And wrap again. So let's see. I might be able to get another wrap out of this. Either way, even if I don't, I can always add another length. 
wherever I need one. See, I can see that these have spread out a little bit before I started wrapping. So all I need to do is use my nail, be very gentle, move those along. There we go. I should end up with just enough space, I think, for two wraps of this. Now, just short on my metal thread. That's all right. I'm going to take it round to the back, and I'm going to secure it pretty much the same way as I added it. So, bring my thread around. You'll you can see if you look closely that my sewing thread has sort of spiraled around underneath as I've twisted, which is absolutely fine. Um, that is natural and it's actually easier than attaching and reattaching a, a length of thread. Fold back to try to lock it. Do another wrap. Another couple of stitches. And I'm just going to add a piece on as well now. I've just crossed over here because my fingers, I was moving things about too much. So, a bit of lost tension there, but that's fine because it's this one. So what I need to do, just as you would if you were adjusting any of your other threads um, tension, if you'd lost it, always put a little bit of an extra stitch in just to hold it where you want it okay so now the only one left is that space there and then I think what I'll do is I will adjust these as well and pop a thread in the middle and that one's crossed over just a little bit too much but we can spread that apart later so Let's get another fairly short, I'm just going to use a short length because there's no need to use a long one when I only have one wrap left. And this wrap's got to go that way, so let's try pointing it a little bit in the direction it needs to go. Fold up just the same as before, little hook, and then that hook can be better secured. Okay. You see what just happened there is I pulled too hard and I split my hook. <laughs> That's what I said. You do have to be careful when you're you're dealing with these metals. again be careful right so bottom to top and secure this <clears throat> Now 
Another little hook. Now I'm going to just trim this straight off, get this out of the way now. And so not bad. I still have a little bit of a gap in between each of the plate. So I think what I want to do is just make sure that there's a space. And this is where, again, you can tweak with your nails because I haven't used a stick. The tendency, and this will happen as well when you're working with, with thread, tendency will be as you get to that center for the, the threads to cross over at each other. And so you don't really want that to happen. And that's why using the stick helps to hold it. Um, it's not as obvious when you're working with something quite so large. Now I've got a length of the gold thread cut from the spool that I was using on something else. So I'm going to use this because we don't like anything sparkly going amiss, do we? Can't, can't get lost. So I'm just going to weave that under. All right. Excuse me, I'm just holding it up to my eyes so I can see what I'm about to do properly. So I just spread out those spaces a little bit so that I knew I could wrap. Now instead of going all of the way around what I'm going to do for this and this will help to secure the plate is I'm going to just go straight across on three of the sides. So three wraps. And I just want to make sure that that plate's off to the side. There we go. Three wraps, rotate, and this will help to hold that plate in, into place. And that one is still a little loose, that piece of plate. So I've got to make sure that I secure that one. But as you can see, that's better now. I always forget about the scissors make such a loud noise on the table. So I do apologize if that was a bit sharp in your ears. I don't know, the camera seems to really pick up that particular pitch or something. Okay, my needle doesn't want to thread, so. There we go. Okay. So wrapping through and securing, just as I would with any other button. So I felt that one of them was a bit loose. I think I may have caught it now. I'm all right with it. And as you can see, you can tweak your edges if you need to. Um, if you're using a base thread of um, silk, it really enhances the metal thread a lot as well. You can come up through this center, which will help to hold these metal threads again. 
Now I'm going to come up with this gold thread. That doesn't always work. It will depend on the thread. I'm going to come up to one side of those central and go back down. You've got to try to be careful not to pierce the foil unless you know where you're piercing the foil. The hole is there for life. And then pull down a little. And that will just help to keep that foil in place. So as I say, it's quite, you know, it it is more time consuming using the metal threads, uh, particularly the strips of metal. But it's really satisfying when you, you have gone ahead and done it. And one thing that can't be denied is that that is a sparkly button. Okay, so there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that helped. Um, do please take part in the challenge I would absolutely love to see your makes. We're going to be doing this all year. We're going to be sharing and everything else. So come over, join the Facebook page, click like, subscribe and share this video and help. Let's help get it out there for this, this challenge for 2022. Take care of yourselves. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.